hardness of the bamboo sort of helps the sound. Does it? Yeah. Hmm. And that's that's uh, that's young growth that they haven't had time to mature. Every, green, every year, yeah. the wall gets more dense, mm -hmm. a and uh, and so this is lighter because there's not as much silica in it as there is in some of these others that are a couple of years old. There is a little split there, but this section's okay, I think. This has possibilities because it's got a nice straight section here, although it's a little narrow. Like this one is okay, but it may be a little thin. Once you bind it, it's probably going to be okay for your purposes. I see. Yeah, uh, you know, if you bind it really tight, but there would be some, some shrinkage. And uh, that means the binding could loosen eventually. Mm. That's, that's why they like to age them a lot. this side of the cut that you made and you sort of go around like turn the bamboo while you're cutting now I'm this cuts on the pull so oh, okay. I'm turning it this way if you're cutting on the push you'd go the other way so you can see it it's not splitting now it's around and you keep turning it so that you're cutting through the wall and that lessens the splitting, even though I, I cut a little deep there on that left side. With some saws, like western saws, the, the teeth angle forwards. But when you're using a jeweler's saw, the, you angle the teeth backwards. And I set the hacksaw blade backwards because for some of the fine stuff I'm cutting, it's easier. Mm -hmm. If you cut on the, on the push, there's a tendency to go off one way or another. You cut on the pull, and you're always pulling in towards yourself, and mm. it keeps it straighter. That's why all the old Japanese saws uh, cut on the pull stroke. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit has a node there. If you look this, inside, this is the actual node right there. Mm -hmm. So here we're lining up our potential lengths of bamboo. Fancy. So, I just cut a little more off. Turned out really good. do actually is to sc scrape down the node. You don't want to take off a lot of the outside finish. Mm -hmm. The outside finish Unless is actually... You have to. It's pretty smooth. So what you want to do is to take down the node itself uh, so that you have more or less a, a smooth barrel. Mm -hmm. Right. And a sharp knife would work or if you've got something like uh, a little belt sander you can do that uh, on a belt sander like this. If you use the grinder, it'll 
You can do this on wood, if you have a good sharp blade you can scrape instead of using sandpaper and it takes away all the saw cuts and if the blade's sharp enough you get a really nice smooth finish without using sandpaper. And then what you do is you can fact you could even take a dowel and punch out the center. But then you'd have to take a file or something. And actually put it down, so it'll affect the sound way too much. Just mm. make sure, because it's not likely to split right at the node if you do it slowly. Because you've got these two cutters here. Mm -hmm. uh, but maybe you need a slightly smaller size than this one. And you just you want to get one that fits easily within the uh, in the hole. Yeah, for sure. And, and, and since doesn't since, uh, scrape the size. Since uh, you should be able to just go like this and feed it through. And depending where the node is, you might even be able to get a big file in there. Like I've got a rat tail file. The inside is naturally very smooth anyway. You can see it on the big ones. Particularly Just once like you uh, haul out the, uh, the nodes. Yeah. use uh, scouring rushes uh, and you you can peel one and glue it onto a surface and, and it has it's full of silica so it makes a very uh, fine polishing surface and they did use it like sandpaper for finish for instance uh, finishing wood and ivory carvings very right. small ones right okay and I don't know whether you're familiar with the scouring rushes but they're a little bit I I, I they look, guess what they look like. like yeah, they, they sort of have bands on them. It's a type of reed, mm. very primitive. It goes back to dinosaur times. And, <laughs> and uh, uh, the individual sections uh, look like little cigarettes if they're broken apart. But uh, that's what they use. They call it tokusa, which means polishing plant. And they used it for various uh, smoothing and polishing things. Uh, they might have used something like that. There, there are a number of things they could have used to clean it out. But okay. basically they, they would tend to take the natural surface. Sometimes they lacquered the inside uh, with a layer of lacquer and then they would polish that afterwards. And they could use a, a cloth on the end of a stick or wrapped around a stick with a fine abrasive powder, like powdered uh, whetstone that they use for sharpening swords and knives and you can that's a fine powder I've got some here. that would definitely do it actually yeah that would yeah this is the uh, I have a friend who polishes Japanese swords and this, this is what it is that's the the powder that's left after you polish sword blades and he just he takes it out from the bottom of the Thing. So it's like a very fine, it's limestone, but it feels like pumice. Yeah, it looks like it feels pumice like... pumice too. Thanks again for all the tips. Oh, you're Thank welcome. you so much. Yeah, it makes it a lot easier, you know, and, and uh, even though I've never made a flute, I've cut a lot of bamboo for various purposes. So.